Sword in hand, a warrior clutches stone to breast. In the sword etched he... F um, sorry. <laughs> this is... You start reading it, it says, In the sword etched he his fading memories. This script sucks. You know what? It's Final Fantasy. Whatever. Tactics. Work the lines. Let's do it. Like, I find the game script for this game. I go through all this trouble, and then the second line is, in sword etched, he his fading memories. That's not right. That's not right. Welcome to Square Roots. <laughs> hey everyone, and welcome to Square Roots, the classic RPG podcast. My name is Jim Banks. I am joined by Matthew Van Zant. Hello, Jim. John Wegroff Brandon. Vigroff. <laughs> and Vanessa. I'm Vanessa. And this is a podcast where we play and talk about your favorite classic RPGs one chunker at a time. And uh, this marks the very first episode in our long-awaited series on Final Fantasy Tactics. This is like Matt's favorite game, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yep. This is my self-declared favorite game. We'll see wow. if it holds up to all of the bangers we've played in recent years. Spoiler alert, I'm finding it very hard to play. <laughs> but I don't think I that has anything to do with the times. game. No, I've just played I, it a bunch. I have other theories about that. Okay. My thumb hurts, too, which is not fun. Oh, you're telling yeah, me we know. My game make thumb hurt. Yeah. Games is hard because they hurt. hurt your it'll thumb. Why, th why game make thumb hurt? Come my feet on. always hurts my fucking thumb. You got to press the buttons gently, like you're touching a woman. But I'm angry. I'm angry attacking. That's I've really messed myself up in, in Elden Ring lately, because I will, like, get into heated battles, and I'll mash down on the left thumbstick, and I'll jump off my horse on accident, and then... Are you starting in on the Elden Ring talk, huh, Jim? Yeah, well, uh, you know what? Let's just, uh, let's just segue right into everybody's favorite uh, segment. Hot gaming news. We can't. You haven't explained what we do on this show. I did. I said it. And you said this is Final Fantasy Tactics Episode 1, Matt's favorite mm -hmm. RPG, and that this is the Square Roots Podcast where we play your favorite classic RPGs one junker at a time. I said all of that. Okay. I'll have hot to check the tapes, news. but for now I believe you. <laughs> hot gaming news. What hot gaming news do you guys have? There's only one thing on the tips of everyone's tongues you know it i know it i mean we all know it because you already said it elden ring came out this week it's elden ring week yeah Whoa, we're all playing it too mm -hmm. yeah. why why, why sure. would we do that we are. well john i'm glad you asked because elden ring talk is going to be the subject of uh well our march patreon bonus i was going to say this month but that we one's going to be called Grace Side Chats. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Elden Ring. That's the talk of the town. Also uh, released the other day was the Steam Deck. What? And uh, people really seem to like it. It looks what? really neat. Yeah. It looks pretty neat, as long as you don't it, mind playing games at 30 frames per second. Some games are okay that way. I did see people liking it. They say it looks good. They've been talking about this forever. Never thought it would actually happen, but here it is. I saw that they also released like a fun new like portal spin-off game uh that will kind of walk you through the features of the Steam Deck, which I thought was oh. a really neat idea. Yeah, that's fun. Ooh, a new mining portal. Those properties <laughs> to sell their new <laughs> trash hardware. Mm -hmm. So this is like a Switch knockoff, or is it like a Game it's, Boy for Super Nerds? What is this? It's a Steam launcher handheld. Yeah. Use better words than that to explain it. looks it. real pretty. It is, yeah, it's a handheld, like a Switch, but it uses your Steam, the Steam launcher to launch PC games that you can play on the handheld. So I could play like that Wizards and Warriors? Sure. Yeah. If you have yep. it on Steam, yep. Ultima, yep. my favorite PC games. So I could play some. Mm -hmm. Are we going to play some Ultima mm -hmm. this year? That's amazing. 
That's an ultimately bad idea. Uh, we've never played an Ultima. Yeah. That's because they all came out before 1976. All of them. We could play the MMO. Is that is that still a thing? Probably. We can't play an MMO. What are you talking well, about? We'll all spend uh, 10 hours in Ultima Online. I played that MMO. That was my first <laughs> MMO. Yeah, I remember everybody playing that thing when it came out. Uh, so, yeah, that's hot gaming news. We're, it's kind of kind of light this week, but is there anything else of note? Yeah, 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 yeah. What? I saw... What? 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 I saw... I, I loaded up my Xbox, and I was like, oh, uh, while I'm drinking this energy drink with and petting my cat, I'll watch Xbox News. You know that little thing that's always up there on the front page? Oh, sure. And uh, one of the things it mentioned in the Xbox News was the first Shin Megami Tensei game to come to Xbox. And I'm kind of excited by that. It is SMT Soul Hackers 2, a sequel to the PS1 and 3DS game Soul Hackers, which is like a sort of street culture based. It was like it sort of world ends with you meets Shin Megami Tensei. Uh, very like... Hackers, you know, the movie Hackers, but imagine that with Persona in it. By Persona, though, cool. not the parts of Persona you like. More the dungeon and monsters of Persona, because it's Shin Megami Tensei. So, I don't know. I thought that was neat. I, I like seeing more of those, and I'm glad that they're coming out on more than just, like, PlayStation or Switch. Sweet. Mm, That's hot hmm. gaming news. It is the hottest gaming news hey you guys want to talk about how you leveled up sure sure that's it for gaming news there was some kind of like news? game awards recently right yeah didn't it's take two uh, win like that that as well it it won like know. game of the year for the dice awards i think that was the dice swords was the one that vanessa's talking about right? yeah uh, yep it's takes two also one the Dice Awards. What are the Dice Awards? I don't know. It probably stands for doing internet computer experiences. Why does everyone know who's played that not like it very much? It stands for Design, Innovate, Communicate, Entertain. What? That's stupid. Um, <laughs> other winners included uh, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart for Ooh. animation and art direction. And of course, outstanding achievement in character went to Lady Dimitrescu. Yeah, outstanding achievement in the field of excellence. Oh man, Forgotten City was up for outstanding achievement in story, but lost to Guardians of the Galaxy. Hmm. And uh, of course, the role playing game of the year, Final Fantasy fourteen Endwalker. What? Cool. And uh, my favorite game, Unpacking, won Best Indie Game. Oh, neat. Unpacking, the game I will keep recommending and none of these guys will ever play. I, I want to play. I want to play. It's it. on Game Pass, I believe. It is. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll play it. Make it one of your instant classics or something. I'd, I'd totally play that. Mm, maybe I will. Maybe you will. That's it for hot gaming news. <laughs> Who wants to level up? You do. I do. Jim, I do. how do you, you level do. up? Hey, I've been playing the heck out of some Elden Ring the past, like, what? Less than 48 hours, I guess. So I started playing it Thursday night at 11 p.m. It's now Saturday at 8.25 gym time. Um, and man, I like it a lot. Uh, I'm like level 32 already. Uh, I've beaten like a dozen bosses so far. Uh, found some cool stuff. Uh, no spoilers, but, uh, I'm into it. Um, I did get to the castle part and I found it to be very tough. So I'm going to continue leveling and then go back. But, uh, yeah, Elden Ring level up two thumbs up. Good game. Uh oh, I got a I got a dog too. But I thought that was your girlfriend's yes. dog. It's like it's our dog. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't realize yeah. that. So what's the dog's name? Yeah. 
His name is Flash. Flash? Wow. This is I the think. first time I've heard that name. Yeah, I haven't heard the name for the dog before. You just say dog. I've heard a different name for the dog, which I mocked. Oh. And then Jim cried and changed the name of the dog. What was it originally? <laughs> it was Rocket was the first oh, name that we Oh, that's went with. why. Yeah. But he is a red colored dog, and then Vanessa had to make it gross. So. Is he red? I was. Yeah. Yeah. He's a ginger. Oh, okay. He's a red and white border collie. Oh. He is a good dog. Uh, John, how did you level up? Well, um, I've decided to embrace being, uh, being, a, you know, a dad type in my 40s. And I started watching Mayday, Air Disasters Investigated, and I couldn't stop watching it. It's so satisfying and has reenactments that I, I sent you a clip of reenactments from that show, uh, as well as a close up of a mustache, Jim. I did see the mustache. I didn't watch the video, but the mustache was. You didn't wa Vanessa watched pretty. that video. I did. What did you think? Of the quality of these uh, I thought it was great. <laughs> I really believed the character. I found the story it was telling compelling. Mm -hmm. And uh, my favorite part was when uh, his hammer head flew off his hammer. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, oh, no. And he did look like Brian David Gilbert. Not every man with a mustache is Brian but David Gilbert. That guy Gilbert. really Believe looked me, I've and checked. behaved like Brian David Gilbert. John sent us the music video for Bohemian Rhapsody the other day and was like, look, it's Brian David Gilbert. That's true. I uh -huh. did do that. <laughs> and they're like, no, that's Freddie Mercury. I'm like, bull, look at this guy. Mm -hmm. Look at his face. There's a mustache. Uh, yeah, he also yeah. sent me a picture of Tom Selleck just to me. And he was like, it's BDG. I was like, mm -hmm. there was. All right. Now, John, I don't we don't want you to get all wrapped up in your BDG vampire theory again on air because it's embarrassing enough in the chat. So, right. yeah, uh, there was a uh, a really good episode of Mayday Air Disasters Investigated <laughs> where the uh, window like they're flying a plane and the window in the plane just like decided to leave like, you know, in the cockpit window. Yeah. When you're a window and you're just like, oh, you know what? I feel like I've done my job enough for today. I'm just going to take a walk. And so it flew away. And then the explosive decompression that this caused did make the cabin door fly <laughs> And I mean, this is a thing that really happened. So please excuse my giggles because the recreations in the show are incredible is all I need to say. Uh, the door did knock the pilot out of the plane. And but his feet caught on the like throttle and he was being like smushed up against the top of the plane for until it landed basically, because uh, flight attendants had to come in and hold his legs so he didn't fly away, but they all thought he was dead, but they still couldn't let his body fly away because it would have gone into the engine or damaged a wing. And... I feel like I remember that. He lived. Happened. They thought he was dead, but yeah. the dude lived through that. And that is crazy. And I think I find this stuff reassuring, and I, I assume this is why it's reassuring in the same way procedural police dramas are because it's like interesting seeing people who are well trained at their jobs from uh the flight attendants to pilots to air dispatchers like try to work through a problem like i find that very calming because you're like oh look how mm -hmm. people try their best and really everyone's trying to help each other and stop things bad things from happening i think just due to you know the, the not hot gaming news not gaming and not hot news on right now. That, right. Uh, seeing something where it's just about people helping each other. Although sometimes these these episodes do end in uh, no one getting out disasters. But even then, like the whole time, people are trying to stop it from happening. And that's interesting. Uh, so, yeah, the, I, I've been in dad mode watching dad television. 
I don't know why. Sweet. It's just the thing my brain needs right now. Uh, what about you, Matthew Van Zandt? Hey, I leveled up. I played that Elden Ring, and I beat it. 100%. <laughs> I platinumed it on my PlayStation 5. So, I'm the king of gaming. Um, That's about it. I'm still playing Divinity uh, 2, and it's really great. I'm near the end of the game. Um, and it's a delight. If anybody has not played Divinity and you have any interest in turn-based RPGs... Uh, check out that Divinity 2. It's so good, I might go back and play Divinity 1. Hey, Vanessa. Yeah. How did you level up? Uh, donk, 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 donk. It's back, baby. Law and Order. Original flavor. The show oh, we've boy. all been waiting for to return to television is back again. Uh, with a almost all new cast... Uh, we do have Sam Watterson returning as Jack McCoy, the prosecutor with a heart of gold and a unwavering sense of justice. And who else is on the show? Mr. Burn Notice himself. <laughs> Burn Notice. Oh, that's the, that's the faux Walter Goggins guy, right? The faux yeah. Walter Goggins. Walter Goggins. Goggins. Thank Sorry, you. Walton Goggins. Walter Goggins <laughs> of the famous, currently in the famously starring in that awesome Gemstones show. The Righteous Gemstones is a hilarious That's the show. And everyone of awesome Steven Gemstones. Universe? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, starring Walter I Goggins. I did honestly mm -hmm. think it was a spinoff of Steven Universe when people were talking about it. <laughs> And uh, most importantly for me, uh, Hugh Dancy as the dreamy prosecutor. Do you think they have someone uh, like someone on the production team that's just in charge of Sam Watterson's eyebrows? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He has his eyebrows are like, I don't know, they should have their own IMDb. Does this policy cover robots? You ever, what? You ever see the uh, the Saturday Night Live Sam Watterson commercial where he's trying to sell robot, where he's selling robot insurance to old people? Are there, he's like, they will, they are very strong because their arms are made of metal, and they will steal your medicine. <laughs> it's one of the best. I don't Live understand what you're talking about, Sam. Oh, that yeah, I see it. I see it. It's on it's YouTube. It's great. It's one of my favorite YouTube uh, Saturday Night Live bits, literally ever. It's insur you know, like those scam life insurance commercials for old people. Uh huh. It's like that, but it's insurance against robot attacks, and it said he delivers the line. The the, the <laughs> Law and Order guy delivers the line because robots are strong and their metal arms will hurt you. Yeah, it sh in the in the uh, in the sketch, it shows a robot barging into an elderly couple's bedroom and taking all their medication. Yeah. <laughs> it's an amazing sketch. You know, as you describe it, I'm starting to have a vague memory of it. Mm -hmm. But I don't care about robots. I only care about Hugh Dancy. Why? <laughs> because his hair is floppy and he's a sweet actor. You That's know what? Right. I'm just he's imagining sweet... Hugh Grant dancing, right? Again, you're you're interrupting my very important <laughs> moment to reach he out. He can dance if he wants to. Across the <laughs> internet to whoever might be listening. Dance if you, you can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Mr. Dancy, we don't know if you he know, likes Hugh video Loring games or not. Mine. But uh, you know, if if he or the casting director of Law and Order is listening, I just want to say you thank you for everything's continuing my streak of always you having a dance. crush on the ADA on Law and Order. <laughs> You can act. You can act. Oh, that's like Everybody the best version of that hats. song, Matt. That like remix version that's got the <laughs> S S S S. You can dance. You can dance. Everybody. You know, I the was chat. quiet and respectful all through like mayhem <laughs> and the air Sorry. airplane <laughs> show. Listen, I, and I want to talk about my mom show. Okay. I'll, and I get this. I'll, I'll stop talking right now. I've also been watching Taskmaster. Uh, that is available on YouTube. Taskmaster is a British show where comedians do tasks. 
What's up with you and and Brit British TV? What's up with you and British TV? <laughs> I, I don't have anything to do with I know, with that and that's junk. a huge issue because you promised me that if I watched Pig, you would watch. I literally just told you episode you two, know, and you have not done it. I know. Most nights I settle into bed and I'll, you know, I'll like, oh, I'll watch a YouTube video like before I go to sleep, and I, uh, I stop my cursor on that one. And I'm like, you know, maybe I'll watch this, and then uh, I never do. I believe that you never will, Jim. And it's up to you to prove me I wrong. Now. No, I don't believe I it. Wow. Fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me twice. It's not actually that important to me. I don't care. I just think you would like it. <laughs> uh, so that's how I leveled up. I don't think I did anything else. I can't remember. It's been a weird week, folks. Okay, moving on. What are we going to call the... The main, are we calling it the quest log? This main, the main segment? We have something to talk about before we discuss the quest log, Jim. Oh, our experiences with this game? It's time for Square Roots History Corner. I'll start us off. I've played this game a bunch. It's one of my favorite games. It's uh, burned into my memory from playing it as a teenager on my friend's PlayStation for hours at a time. And literally days at a time and not sleeping because I had to keep grinding to get, I don't know. I didn't finish the game back then. So anyway, uh, yeah. And I'm playing it on the Vita. What about you, Jim? Uh, this is my second attempt to play this game. Uh, my first one was just maybe a year or two ago. I downloaded it on the Vita. And I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to see what this game is like. And then... Got to, like, the the first, like, real battle and didn't realize that I could add troops that weren't Ramza <laughs> and started the battle and got destroyed and put it down and never played it again until uh, our listeners uh, decided to let it win the vote. It's very cute. They all look like cute little dolls on little toys and you move them around the battlefield. It's like playing with little army men and i love it uh vanessa what's your experience with this game uh when it first came out for the playstation i did have it i tried it i couldn't stick with it and let it go uh then a few years ago it came out on ios and i picked it up for the ipad and i played it through on that and finished the game uh this time i am also playing it and definitely have not already beat it again because I was excited for this game. <laughs> what a nerd. Look, it's just like when it's portable, it's super easy. The Olympics were on. They're boring. It's like, oh, sports are always on. What do I do? I'll just uh, pick up this iPad and sit here quietly and play on my iPad and pretend to be interested in losing. What a bunch of losers. You love losing. I think they're a bunch of losers. Johnny? Yes? What's your experience with this game? My experience with this game is that I loved Shining Force. So when I saw this was coming out, I was like, OMG, it's like a Shining Force, but in Final Fantasy with Final Fantasy characters, this looks amazing. This was a... Uh, it was being previewed a lot in Die Hard Game Fan Magazine, my favorite retro game magazine. Well, it wasn't retro. You know, my favorite hot gaming news publication of the time. And so I bought it the day it came out. And I played it wow. until I got to the Vygraf fight. And then I couldn't get past it. And then I tried. But then I'd like saved in that three saves in a row part. Where before you get there, mm -hmm. and I was stuck, and I gave up. And uh, then in 2014, I did try playing it again, and I got I didn't even get to the Vigra, and I was like, I'm doing so much better. I'm looking at facts. I got to the the part the room with full of ladies w who have arrows. It's like really close to the end of chapter two, I think, or and maybe end of chapter three. And uh, I couldn't get past it. I tried over and over and over. I had multiple saves, so I just gave up at that point, though, because I just wasn't doing it. That is my Final Fantasy Tactics experience. It was pretty 
not a good experience for Johnny, really. Uh, I do think it's, it's a real Im- Final Fantasy VIII. Mm-hmm. Mm. I do think it's important for listeners who are playing along, if you haven't started yet, just be aware that this game has some huge difficulty spikes, mm-hmm. and you are going to have to go back and grind mm-hmm. and level your characters. Mm-hmm. I'm... But it has a complex leveling system that makes it kind of fun to try different things out while you're leveling. I'm going to try. Yeah. I'm going to try again. And get, look, Like, I got pet through this chunker, but barely. I think I might restart what, after watching some tips on how to, like, build your party. Uh, which is okay, because uh, I have t- time to grind this week, so it's, it's not going to be a problem. Don't worry about it. Oh, oh my gosh! I can't believe I forgot this in my level up. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to do a a hot rewind, folks, because last week, as people may remember, we announced our probably most exciting Square Roots contest yet. The oh my god, Butterfinger presents game better with Butterfinger presents Halo, we, we, not we affiliated cannot, legally, with we Butterfinger. <laughs> say that this has anything to do with Butterfinger. I just said it wasn't. Okay. If you hadn't cut me off with your legal disclaimer, you would have heard right. mine. Well, well, Matt can edit that out if he chooses to. <laughs> okay. So, we got so many entries for this. Uh, at least ten. No more and no less, I would say. That's pretty good uh, for however, a Square Roots contest. Yeah. It's pretty good for a Square Roots contest. However, uh, one of those entries I am going to disqualify uh, because it was from Matt's co-worker. Mm -hmm. And somehow he managed to enter the contest before it was officially live. (laughs) Uh, We don't know. (laughs) We don't know how he got this information. Uh, But yeah, I'm sorry, co-worker who does not listen to the show. You're out. Uh, but the other nine entries I have placed in a random order, and I am about to roll a virtual nine-sided dice, and we'll see who wins Ooh. together. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Here we go. Drum roll, please. <laughs> bra, 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 bra. That was good. And the winner is... Lucky number five. And that corresponds with Michael the Cat. Michael the Cat, you have won the copy of Halo, a signed picture of John Brandon, Mm -hmm. signed by myself, not by John. Okay. And a doodle and whatever else I feel like sending. Keep an eye on your email. Hmm? A Three Musketeers bar? You know, I promised that. Uh, I have not been eating the Three Musketeers bars, but I did check the kitchen, and I believe they are gone. So, oh, no. uh, yeah, I uh, I may have to <laughs> provide... Those were the last ones in existence. <laughs> Those were the last ones. <laughs> um, I might not have to find an alternate prize uh, for that, um, whatever is Vanessa's, whatever Vanessa's got laying around in her kitchen, whatever I have laying around in the kitchen. Anyway, uh, cats cannot eat uh, three musketeer bars, so that wouldn't be a good prize for Michael. Michael is owned by our listener Samu, uh, so Samu, uh, I will ask you for Michael's contact information. Congratulations! I'm so excited to get this halo out of my house. Now I'm ready to move Sweet. on. Congratulations, Hello. Mr. or Mrs. Cat. Should I give away my copy of Quest Horizon on? Zero West? No, give it to me. Oh, wait, I can't take can't it. Can't I keep forgetting. It. I thought you were going to send it to me. <laughs> uh, I think I might give play it to it Jim. first. I don't know. I, I don't no. know. I still okay. have to play Horizon Zero Dawn first, and I don't. Yeah. So I'll do that first. Wait, you haven't you played have... Horizon Zero Dawn? Yeah. Well, I played like the first. But that's a great game, Johnny. I played the first ten hours or something, and then I got to like kill this base, and I was so sick of open world games where it's like there's a base and you have to kill everyone in the base. I was like, I don't, yeah. don't want to do this. 
That's how I felt playing the new Halo that Vanessa just gave away. I was like, oh, check out all these bases for you to go invade. And I was like, oh, yeah, great. that one, it's fun to play, but man, it's boring. Mm-hmm. Like, the story is just so boring. Yeah, it's no old ring. Yeah, that old ring. That it's, old ring. It's, it's lack of story really hooks First you. First you got to find a woman, then you got to find the old ring. That's how you win old ring. Mm-hmm. The Germanic scriptures. That's the name of a book. Excuse me. Mind in Final Fantasy Tactics. So I was like, ooh, that'd be a great, terrible name for our... Should be like a grim grimoire or something, right? The Germanic scriptures. <laughs> Quest log. The Garamonic scriptures. Not I will work. confess, I uh, uh, it's been hard for me to keep up with what's going on plot wise in this game. I mean, not a lot's happened. I know. Well, everybody's got like silly names mm-hmm. and There's Dice Darg, uh, Balrog, Dice. dice Dar- I cannot get over Dice Darg. That's such a dumb I can't. Name. Somebody pronounce their last the family Be- last name for me, please. <laughs> Beel- no, but that's not even it. It's Beelv. Yeah. Beelv. Yeah, it's not know. good. Delita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Delita. more like Delita his DMs. Remember that hilarious Final Fantasy Tactics quote I made? Yeah, Delita that? those yeah. DMs. Delita those DMs. Uh, so we. All right. Well, let's talk about a little bit about the game first. It's the first of the Final Fantasy Tactics series, mm-hmm. of which there are three other versions now. None of them are any good, and you should not waste your time with mm-hmm. them. The uh, definitely when, I, and I watched a video or. Yeah, I think I watched a video like saying, how could you say tactics advances for babies just because it starts out with, oh, I'm trapped in my Final Fantasy games. Let's have a snowball yeah. fight. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. It's a bad Ugh. game. Uh, this game takes the concept of the jobs system from Final Fantasy 3 and 5. And expands it even further. And ten two. This was the only jobs game that I had really played until Final Fantasy X-2. Mm-hmm. And I guess Final Fantasy fourteen kind mm-hmm. of does the job system, it too. It sure does. But that's an MMO, so I won't And Barvely Default, which I know you played the first one. I did love Barvely Default. There's three Until of it made me play the game again. And then I was like, no, thank you. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's that's where I got to, too. I was like, um, you want me to do what now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you ran out of budget. And you think the solution to that is to make me play your game mm-hmm. twice. Many, it, it's Same way I felt about Nier Automata. Yeah. Uh, so there is... Uh, it starts... Uh, uh, it, so this game... There are two. There's the first release and War of the Lines, which is a retranslated version with some extra content. Uh, definitely, I like. I've never played War of the Lines before, so having a readable story is great. Like the opening yeah, to sure. this game in Final Fantasy Tactics has a point where it's talking about how the people of this, the poor people of this land, had little money, and it takes literally a minute for a little money to appear on the screen. Yeah. It was like one right. letter every what ten seconds, which maybe works. This game takes an. <laughs> it maybe works better in. This game Japanese. takes an hour to start. Sorry, it's okay. This game takes an hour to start. Like it, particularly if you play the original, which we're not playing on the show. We're all playing War of the Lions, mm-hmm. but the original, like you said, like it would take you so long just to get to that shitty first fight. Mm-hmm. That uh, in the you know if the other problem with this game is I've noticed is it desperately needs a remaster with a fast forward button because a lot of particularly it seems like boss fights the entire opposite side goes before you do and you will sit there I'll sit there and my Vita will go to sleep waiting for my turn. Yeah, that's a problem. You're a problem. Yeah, I know. Um. So, yeah, there's a lot of version differences. I just recommend, for the better script, to play 
War of the Lions. There's some cute stuff with the original version. And so if you are playing the original version, it's fine. Like the story is basically the same. Some of the names are changed to protect the innocent. So like Tisha becomes Teta in the original. She's Teta instead of Tisha. And uh, I think they call her Tita. Tita, right? Are you guys talking about Titra? Titra. Titra. That's it. She's Teta in the, in the, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Definitely. What do you think? Some of the Uh, classes change too, like priest becomes white mage and things like that. Yeah. And, uh, Oracle becomes mystic, I think, right? Mathematician becomes calculator. Mm -hmm. I liked mathematician. What did, Isn't it like arithmetician? What do you think of the new cutscenes? Yeah. I have some mixed feelings on them. I like them. I like the replacement. They look grimy with like a filter, yeah. but they're real blocky and they have very bland faces, but they kind of put this grimy filter it's over it to give it. Grimy? It's supposed to be like pencil. I like it's it. It's like pencil drawing. Yeah, I like sketchy. Okay. It reminds me a lot of uh, I like it. Valkyria it's Chronicles fine. is like a playable version of that. Like that kind of sketchy hmm. art look. Uh, I think they look good. Interesting. But some like uh, there's a scene with them blowing in grass that was a sprite based cut scene before, and now is a now is a animated one. I think I kind of like the sprite based one better when they were just. Oh, interesting. I uh, I think that those like animated cutscenes are like kind of the best part. I think the voice acting is really good, and uh, they're really well done. The creatures, and by creatures I mean people in this game, are freakish. They have no nose, and their hands mm-hmm. are so large that their arms would not support their weight in real life. Uh, really, that their trunks are all so slim that their arms and legs look ginormous mm-hmm. in comparison. Hey, hey Vanessa, why have, was Ramza's I, story lost to history? Well, Johnny, that's the whole plot of the... Nobody knows. We know. Get it? Uh, you know what's funny? This I get is it, a sequel. But I'm mad about it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is a sequel to a game we've played before, guys. Uh, ooh, ooh. Um, is it? What? That's not true. It is true. Yes, it is. It's a sequel to uh, Vagrant to, uh, Story. Right? Yeah. To Vagrant, Vagrant Story. And Final Fantasy Twelve. Oh, yeah, in Final Fantasy XII. I forgot we yeah. played that. Is it, though? Yeah, well, they're like, all the same. I know it's in the same world, Yeah, but... there's, like, one or two characters that are referenced between them all. I feel like War of the Lions adds a bit more. I feel like they didn't decide. More. Yeah, I feel like, did War of the Lions come out before Advance did? Uh, no. No, uh... I feel like Advance is the one that was like, this is Ivalice. Yeah, Advance has like all those like monster classes and like bunny yeah. ladies and bunny men and stuff. Uh huh. And yeah, lizard men yeah. or whatever the fuck those guys are. Moogles, lots of Moogles. Well, yeah. Uh, are there Moogles in this version? Theirs is a summon, right? Not in this. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember the summons. I feel like there's a Moogle summon. Uh, one thing to point out is that this game does have like an intentional slowdown whenever you use spells, and it's the worst. And, but that's not in the PS1 version, and that's the weird part. Um, I remember the PS1. Well, maybe I'm just the PS1. It up. Uh, no, it ran at full speed during magical effects. It's really weird. There's like I, I don't know if it's on purpose or it's a weird glitch. It's built into the game, from what I understand. It's in. Is it in the it's iOS version, Vanessa? Oh, yes. Boy, that sucks. Or at least it was on the iPhone version that I played. Anyway, all right. Well, should we dive into the quest log finally? The real quest log. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah. do it. Let's, let's go into the Germanic the... scripture. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> so we the start off scriptures. with a stormy day, and Chocobo knights are racing to a church. Inside this, this is taking place like in media rest, right? I mean, also don't all stories. Well, this one in particular, right? Because of the way the narrative <laughs> uh, it's, is framed. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like um, 
uh, one of those stories where they t- like it, it's like you bet I bet you wonder how I got here, and then it flashes yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like oh, you've heard this story of this great hero, but there's someone you might not have heard of. Right, it does. He was start... a reindeer with a red nose, and everyone made fun of him. What was that? You know. Final. I want to figure out who that scholar was. Tactics opening narration. Oh, I know. I know. Hang on. Ooh. It's in my little game script. Oh, the one um, I'm, the, with the typos in it, right? Yeah. Arslam. I am Arslam, a student of Ivelisse's Middle Age. You are familiar with the War of the Lions? No. It was a bitter war of succession that rent the land of Ivelisse in two. Here we first find mention of Delita Hiral, mm-hmm. a hitherto unknown young man, the hero, who would draw the curtain of this dark act of our history with his heroism of great renown, a story familiar to oh, all we should call who it the dwell Durai within our land. We should. Yeah, that, 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 yeah. Ah, but what the eye sees is oftentimes a mere fragment of the truth. For there was another young man, the youngest of House Beauville. Bol- Beauville. Like, it doesn't even make sense as a French word because you wouldn't really have it. Beauville. Long L-V. fame for producing leaders of knights and men. There is no official role, uh, record of the role he played in history's stage. However, according to the Durai papers, the existence of which becomes known to the public only this last year, they had long laid concealed in the church archives. This forgotten young man is, in fact, the true hero. Dun, dun, dun. I like this setup. I think that's really neat. The idea that your 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 main character was kind of lost to history, and everyone thinks the other guy is the hero. I don't, yeah, I think it's like everyone a- was like, "Oh, Sephiroth is so cool. We love Sephiroth," and forgot all about Cloud. But that would never happen. In the uh, original translation, he then says, "The Church claims he was a blasphemer, an anarchist, the root of all evil." But is this the? Truth, scare quotes. Well, do you join me on a journey for the truth? What's it say? <laughs> but before that, please tell me your name and birthday. Yeah. <laughs> What's it say in yours? Um, it says, uh, yeah. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, but before we begin, might I ask you to share with me no, no, your before, uh, name? Uh, uh, the, the three lines before. You want me to read the whole thing? Oh, come no, on. The church, okay. what, what do, I just want to know about the anarchist. The church Blasper. maintains he was a heretic, an inciter <gasps> of unrest, and disturber of the peace, which account is to be believed. Join me in my search to uncover the answer. Ah, but before we begin, might I ask you to share with me your name and the date of your birth? Ooh. So, mm-hmm. first major decision of the game Mm -hmm. and in fact one of the only decisions you can make in this game Mm -hmm. what did you provide for your birthday be vague if you want to yeah Uh, i'm mostly interested in yeah did you use your actual birthday i sure did i did as did i now this does change uh uh a lot in the game this is the zodiac brave story Right. So the Zodiac yes. has a lot to do. There's a whole chart. And I believe this isn't something Final Fantasy made up of like compatible and incompatible star signs. So if you have a compatible bar, uh, star sign, you will like heal them more or your buffs will work well on them. If they are incompatible, uh, your your buffs won't work well. And and the opposite, if you're trying to attack them. Right. And the thing is, there's a uh, there is a particular star sign that is like the worst one. But if they're the opposite sex of yours, then it's the best. 
Uh, yeah. So there's these knights racing to a church in the rain. Inside the church is uh, there is a lady and another lady, right? There's a princess and a knight. Yeah, that is uh, the princess is Ovelia. Ovelia. Okay, I'm look. Oh no, this is this list is bad. It's like all the fake names. Yeah, but her name still is out. Ovelia. That's good. And Ovelia Bolva. Bolv. And Agrius is the knight, I believe. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. I think she joins your party yep. later on. There's also another knight, and he's got a really silly helmet and big, floofy shoulders, and he's an older guy named... He looks like a dog man. <laughs> he has always looked like a dog man to me. I cannot well, unsee I think it. He's got he looks like he has a snout. A chocobo-shaped helmet, right? I always thought it was like a chocobo beak. He looks like he has a snout. He looks like a dog man. I don't understand how anybody can see anything else. I don't see a snout. I see a mustache. He's got a mustache, Matt. Do you think mustaches look like snouts? Don't argue with me about the dog, Okay, man. I won't. Uh, listeners, do you agree I with Matthew? I played this game back in the original translation when he only spoke in woofs. Yeah, I, I also played the original translation. <laughs> T-Y-V-M? Did you know? Well, okay, only halfway. You played the Canadian translation, <laughs> so don't even come at me That's with that true. bullshit. That's true, they added use to everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In the Canadian version, he's a moose man. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> so this is Gaffgarian. Uh, so a knight comes in and says that they are under attack. And that's bad. And Gaffgarian's like, well, let's murder him. And uh, Ramza is there. And Ramza's like... Yeah, sure, whatever. I don't care anymore. I'm too cool to care. I'm just a cell sword. Yeah. I have no value beyond my next hot meal. Uh-huh. But he has fun, spiky hair on his little doll body, and he has big, bright metal pants mm -hmm. and a lovely purple shirt. I thought it was like Not armor. dissimilar to the color yeah, like, of the Waluigi that's staring at me right now. He does have like a bluey purple armor. And I like that we armor. do. I don't know. Maybe it is armor. I always thought it was like cool armor. Probably. Yeah. If you look at his illustration, it is armor. Mm -hmm. We do have the option of renaming uh, of this character. Did mm -hmm. you rename yeah. Ramza? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Why would you? I don't do it anymore. I don't care. Bonzo. Mm -hmm. I named him Bombs, though, because it's sort of mm -hmm. like Ramza. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What about you, Vanessa? I named him Ramen. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> what about Jim? That sounds good. I named my character Buttman. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, boy. That's a wonderful Jim. <laughs> Thank you. So you do have, uh, yes, you can name whatever you want. And you can also, it, so this game does give you like a whole bunch of generic soldiers in a few, and you can name them too. Uh, so I'm going to do that again, and I will, I only got the chance to name one this time, but I'm going to go back and restart, and then I'm going to name them all. Cause you, oh, you can rename them in the, oh yeah, I guess. No, you can't. You can rename you can monsters. Rename them. You can't rename soldiers, I found out. Oh, but really? if you recruit them, then you can name them. Uh, yeah, you can just go to the end and recruit new soldiers anytime you want. Well, I'm going to that's why I don't understand why you're restarting. Just, just you let, can just just go let get me soldiers. do my thing. <laughs> Matt's shaking I his understand. Head. I restart games a lot. It's like I feel like just off about the choices that I made. Yeah. And exactly. I want the opportunity to play my dream version of this game. Yes. I want to do it right. I want to do it well. So uh, I want to tell the other boys to go to hell. It, Johnny does it right. Johnny does it well. Exactly. Uh, so Gafgarian's like, hey, I'm going to murder these guys. And Ovila's like, oh, you don't have to murder them. He's like, yeah, I do. Later. So we go outside and he's like striking them down. He's got this this spell that like produces a giant sword out of the ground and makes them die in one hit. That's pretty rad. Uh, you only control yep. cool. uh, Ramza in this first fight. Uh, 
And honestly, this first fight, you it's can kind of die the worst thing easily. that happens in the game because you do just sit there and watch the gameplay for quite some time. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of ah, it's got a really great scream when people die. Yeah, I think yeah, it's it sad when you hear the the ladies die ah. and they have their little 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 screams. Mm-hmm. Well, as we all know, uh, you don't actually die until you're, uh, you've been dead for three counts. So mm-hmm. uh, just finish the fight. Am I going to turn into a chest? Or a crystal? Am I going to turn into a crystal? I'm terrified to find uh, out. If, I hope I get Is this what awaits me? Sweet vape, Is this hell? Your sweet cloud making skill if you do turn into a, a crystal. <laughs> If I was going to acquire an ability from Matt, mm-hmm. hmm. I want a sweet cloud making. Yeah, I choose that? belches. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a good one. Oh, I just can't do it. Mm-hmm. I'll try my best. And, and if I, I could acquire an ability from Vanessa, it would be luxurious hair. Oh, thank you. Oh, can I do that too, actually? Yeah, means... just like the, the longest, <laughs> most luxurious hair. What would you take from Jim, Vanessa? Oh, mm, I would take, uh, I would take, I mean, it's tricky because Jim's pretty successful at his career, but I would like a twin. I'm going to have to go with uh, taking his ability to be a twin. Yeah, that way you can mm, attack twin, twice uh, twice in a turn. Yep, I can attack twice in a turn. Uh, <laughs> there would be two of me, and we'd look alike, we'd walk alike, we'd talk alike. Uh, it's enough to make you lose your mind. And, uh, yeah, I, I could uh, you get one job and just go every other day. Ooh, that's a really good idea. It's a great idea. So then you sure that's one what paycheck. Jim does with his twin. Well, you know, we could make it work. A lot of households live off just one paycheck and have like a stay-at-home spouse. Name one. Plus, like, think of the... Who? Mm. Mm. <laughs> that's tough. Well, nobody I know, but I've heard of it, okay? And, um... Then uh, think of the fun hijinks of like, uh, hey, you told me yesterday that you would uh, ha- bring me those papers. And I would be like, did I? You know? Hijinks. If I had a twin, I would definitely go the uh, prestige route with it. What do you mean? Oh, like fool people? Yeah, I guess that's a huge spoiler for the prestige. Cut that out. <laughs> but it's not twins. I mean, the movie's like, what, 15 years old? Yeah, they're just brothers, right? Wait, yeah, I think you're right. Which, another, is, which an, is the one? Yet another spoiler. <laughs> which is the one with. Uh, the, the teleportation and, like, the clones? That would be the prestige. Yeah. Not what you're talking about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like, but like, there's two sets of magicians. One is cloning himself. The other just has a brother that they have like a secret. What? I thought they brother. were twins. They have to be. That's how it works. Oh yeah, they're like secret twins. They're secret twins. Nobody. But but knows. in the one with Wolverine, doesn't he also find another Hugh Jackman? No, he clones. Well, yeah, he does. He finds like a like a drunk guy that looks kind of like him, but uh, is also played by. Hugh Jackman. Yeah, because there's the Guy Pierce and the Hugh Jackman one. Guy Pierce, Hugh Jackman, Isn't it Guy Pierce. Guy, so no, that's uh, it's 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 Batman. Batman yeah. So Christian Guy Pierce Bale. attacks oh. this castle, and we have to fight him off, and we do. The end. But dun dun dun. <laughs> some knaves sneak in through the back door, or did they just burst <laughs> by us? I don't really Wink. remember. Uh, and, uh, they kidnap Ovelia. Ophelia. Oh, oh. Oh, no! Oh, oh, oh. They do kidnap Ovelia. And that's bad. Which is, it, so in the original translation, where is it that they say curse God and die? I'm trying to remember. I think it's, like, somewhere around here. 
isn't it? Or is it when when Teta's being kidnapped? It's weird how you're talking to me like we're carrying on a conversation and not like you just started randomly talking about something that nobody's ever heard of and is probably <laughs> fake. <laughs> when do they start cursing God and dying? <laughs> uh, I think you're thinking about when uh, Richter comes into the castle for the first time. What is a man? A miserable pile of secrets. So they kidnap Ovilia, but then we flash back. Is that right? Yes. We flash back to when Ramza was but a lad. And you can know you know he's but a lad because now he has brown pants and a very blue shirt. Mm-hmm. And he's hanging out. Having a duel with his best buddy, Deleted. Delita. <laughs> I was not sure when I played this on the PlayStation if Delita was supposed to be a man or a woman. I was pretty convinced that Delita was a no, woman. No, he's got 80s, like, slick back stockbroker hair in this opening. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah okay. Actually, speaking of which, so Delita comes in kidnapping uh, the, the princess, and this is where he says, tough. Don't blame us. Blame yourself or God in the original translation, which is amazing. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is good translating right there. Mm-hmm. This goes for a more Shakespeare light thing that I I like it well enough. I can see that it I, I think that Vanessa mentioned it bothers her. But... It's uh, it's an Alexandro Smith mm-hmm. again, like the guy who's translated Vagrant Story and uh, Final Fantasy Twelve. It feels like one of his translations because he kind of goes for that that uh, early modern English sort of feel to it, like Marquis yeah, like and it. all that. I think it's fun. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Did you say Delita has slick back hair. Uh, yeah. When he's in older, yeah. Slick back hair, white bathing suit, sloppy steaks, white couch. Yeah. Live for <laughs> yes. New Year's Eve. <laughs> oh no! I started Jim <laughs> off on one of these. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we flash back to when to Ramza is young, and he's a real piece of shit. He's <laughs> dueling with his friend Delita, and well, cut to the academy. It cuts from there to that's where you get that really long spiel about how people are poor except for the nobles. And in the original PS One version, it does take about eighteen hours for that uh, little crawl to go across the screen. Uh, so yeah. They're they're just graduating from night school. Ramza is either five or twenty. I don't know how old young Ramza is. Oh, you know what we didn't say here because we're dumb. Uh, when at the monastery, when you're defending it, and for Ovelia, uh, the person that dashes inside and like kidnaps her is Delia. Yes, and that's where he says. Curse God or blame God. Or blame, oh yeah, okay. Was it blame yourself or know. God? Yeah, yeah. What a good blame yourself or God. No one cares. <laughs> oh, Delita. Uh, all right. So I've got some notes now. The chapter. This chapter starts in Garland Magic City in the Academy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how old is Ramza? The Academy of Knights. Is he five or is he twenty? Because he could be uh, any of those ages. Five. <laughs> yeah, he's, no, he's, he's, he's five. Yeah, I think I think they're all supposed to be adult, young adults. They keep calling like them kids, teens, like anyone who 20s. anyone who encounters. Yeah, but they're all old. Well, they're squires, right? Like, yeah, they're squires. yeah, they're students. They're they're students at night school. Yeah. All right. So anyway, we're at the academy, and someone's going to visit the city. But then a report comes in that there's thieves in the city. And they order us, Ramza and the cadets, to go investigate. And here's your first kind of real taste of the game. You have Delita with you, who will act on his own throughout uh, these fights, which is great because then he can just go fucking die and stop wasting my time and eating up my experience. <laughs> I was reading Fuck a guide Delita. and it's like... You don't have to keep Delita alive at all. I was reading a you guide that die was all like, the way up to the last fight. Delita will carry your team. I'm like, no, he won't. He'll like sit in a corner no. and block... <laughs> Like he yeah, does he does that all the time. I feel like... He sucks. He makes the dumbest choices. What do you think of the look of the game? Because I really like the mix of the sprites for the characters and these really simple... It looks like dioramas. And, mm, and yeah. I think in, in... I think I said it... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I said it earlier, but to me, it, it looks very like 
toy-ish. Mm-hmm. Like everything looks, the houses look like, nothing looks sized correctly. So the houses, you know, you look like you have your little action-y men and like little houses and you're moving them around on a little stage, which I really like. It feels very like tabletop RPG to me. And I love it. It's the thing that probably drew me to this more than any of the other Final Fantasies that I was playing at the time um, that never really hooked me that much, even like 7 and 8. This is the one that I was like, I love this. I want to move my little guys around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, tech, uh, not tech. Anyway. Project Triangle does, or Triangle Strategy does, sort of uses tilt shift to make it even more. And then, and also like each level is on a desk. So it really emphasizes that kind of diorama That's thing. That's really neat. Yeah. That's cool. The only, the only thing that I would change about the combat the way that it looks is I wish it was a little bit easier to shift the perspective. Yes. Uh, Because a lot of times, like, I find myself, like, twirling it around or whatever just to to make sure that I'm moving to the correct spot. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a limitation of the system, unfortunately, but... um, And and the way the game was built, you know? And I don't think that... I think even if they remaster it, it'll still have this crappy... Even if they can map them to, like, an analog stick or something, it'll still be slow and shitty looking. So, right? even in this first fight, especially, uh, like, it's it's very clunky in the original translation, the War of the Lions version. It, it, it definitely emphasizes that these thieves are stealing because no one, basically the lower classes have no money. They have been starved out by the nobility who are giving them high taxes yeah. and taking all their food. Uh, Some of the scroll te- scrolling text that we kind of skipped by talks about how we just got out of a 50-year-long war mm-hmm. with the neighboring country. The peasantry is very uh, up in arms against the aristocracy. Well, because the aristocracy... starving and unhappy. Yeah, the aristocracy didn't have enough money to pay the soldiers who were coming back from the war. So that's what kind of started this dissatisfaction and groups uh, see, of, I didn't realize that I didn't catch that yeah. that's very interesting groups of people rose up like this attacking group the corpse brigade Ooh. Uh, and they attack this magic city and uh, the students are sent to fight them off I mean this isn't like the main corpse brigade it's just like a little bunch of there yeah it's just a little bunch of them yeah so um, we fight them. I guess we should talk. We've touched on the mechanics of this game. It's like chess. Yeah. It's like little chess boards. You have a grid. Um, there is some height to it in the different areas mm-hmm. that can impede your ability to move uh, in different directions without like climbing up a staircase or something. But also lets you throw stuff farther and shoot arrows farther. And I think... Uh... You know, uh, magic maybe does it? Or it just gives you better like. Does it give? You, I think it does give you a longer range for magic. It definitely does for arrows. The elevation is definitely one of the things that makes me like this game more than similar games like Fire Emblem. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know why, but the something about these the level. I don't, I've never really been able to pinpoint it. I think it's the level design in this game is just exceptional. And plus, something about anytime it. that you're fighting someone, you're like, Anakin, I've got the higher ground! You like recreating that <laughs> scene with this. Yeah, you're like, you cannot win, but they can win. This is a hard game. Uh, so, these people come, we fight them off. Super easy. Um, mm-hmm. Delita is like, hey, Ramza, don't forget to use your sword well. And Ramza's like, I'm from the house of Blul. Uh We know how to use our swords. Uh, come on, buddy. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he's like, well, I used to work in your house and now we're friends. Mm-hmm. So they're like brothers, say. sort of. Super kind brothers. of. Yeah. They're super best friends, bros. Uh, but there is, you know. He always, he's his friend, but he always has worked for him, you know? It's, for Rams, it's a, it's a is like super idealistic in this first chapter. And he yeah. doesn't, he's like, well, that doesn't make no difference, which, you know, that, that yeah. seems like an honorable way to live. But he also kind of ignores what this means to everyone else. Like he's, right. his idealism blinds him to what's happening. He's like, I don't see class. Yeah. So... Uh, we fight them off, and then it's time to head back home 
uh, to uh, Egros Castle. Mm-hmm. And on the way, uh, we come across a squire who is being uh, attacked by these corpse brigade people in a field. And he sucks. And we have the choice of rescuing him or leaving him to die. Leave him to die. <laughs> well, either way, he joins your party. Sadly, you can't avoid yep. having him in your party. And it this just is changes Argath. the objective. Yeah. Argath Thadolphus. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a real just asking questions guy. Mm-hmm. He, he's a real, why are you mad, bro? I'm just saying the facts. Yeah. He's like, I'm just asking, like, what if noble people are noble because God thinks that they're better than everyone else and everyone else is just like swine? Like, what if that? I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just asking questions. Uh, so we haul Argath um, back to the castle. Uh, Argath tells us that Marquise Eldemore has been kidnapped by the Corpse Brigade and that he wants to go see Ramza's older brother, Dysgar- Dysdarg? How do we want to say this? Dicky Darg? Dysedarg. They said it. Yeah, they say it in one of the cutscenes. I think it's just Dice Dark. Dice Dark. Like... Dice, Dice Dark. Yeah. That's yeah. a stupid it's... name. Yeah. It's all the names in this game are <laughs> dumb as fuck. Dice Dark Blue, who is the. Uh... <laughs> I don't know, buddy. It's not, is it any worse than Squall? Let's be honest. Uh, I mean, it's harder to. Say. Sid in this game is the fucking best, though. We haven't gotten this to Sid. This is the yet. best Sid. Ugh. Uh, so Dystarg and uh, Ramza's old, other older brother, Zalbag, that's Z A L B A A G. Isn't that what the, uh, the, the Chewbacca from uh, Kotor? Yeah, <laughs> I think that was Zanzibar or something like that. Uh, they uh, co. So oh, this is. Nothing, sorry. Talking to myself. They co-lead the house. Um, And Argath shows up and he's like, Ew, it's me, Argath. I demand that you go rescue the Marquis. Um, Mm -hmm. Nobody likes Uh, him. They think he sucks. Well, they're at at their father's deathbed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zalbag and Dice Darg and their father... Balbane. <laughs> <laughs> Balbane. The father yeah, seems so, like a pretty stand-up So let's dude. get this straight. Zalbag, mm-hmm. Dice Darg, <laughs> Alma is the sister, yeah. Ramza is the be- young baby bastard boy. The protag. Mm-hmm. That's the protag. And he's on his deathbed. And he does seem like a stand-up dude, but uh, the brothers kind of seem scummy. Yeah, I think and... that Ramza and Alma have the same mother. I don't think that they're bastards. I think that like he, the Duke remarried or something right. like that. Oh, I, I, right. I assume that they're bastards, right. but yeah, you're probably you're probably right, Vanessa. You're probably right. Anyway, so he, the father asked them to treat him as one of the family, and then he dies. <laughs> <laughs> he does turn into a crystal, and they're like, ooh. Let's get a sweet ability. Yeah. Ooh, acquire his abilities. <laughs> but what happens? You argue with your brothers and then run out. They send you out to. They send you to go see Alma. And she's like, it's me, Alma. Hi. Yeah. I'm just a soft girl. Um, And then Zalbag kind of comes swaggering up and he's like, "Uh, hey, so I heard this Maquis is like uh, over this one place and we can't go get him, but. Wouldn't it be interesting if someone went to go get the Marquis? Mm-hmm. Uh, too bad nobody can do it. Bye. Excuse me, isn't this a Marquis <laughs> frown? Uh, trans- it's a ma- Marquis. Yeah, Marquis. Marquis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I did That's like right, it. You're right. like, it would wow, be Marquis. Guard duty sure is boring, huh? <laughs> yep. You know what's never explained, even though, I mean, it's reasonable to just say. It's because it's all uh, retconned. But where are all the other species in this game? Like the bunny people? Where are, 
Yeah, where are the bunny women the and the people. lizard men and the, the alligator men and the uh, boogles? They're just nowhere to be found. Oh, this game could use some boogles. I think there's a boogles there's summon. I loved the summons, and that's all I used. I don't know if... I don't think that's effective, but that's when I was originally playing this game, that's all I wanted to do was summon, summon, summon. We sh we'll get to it when we get to it. We're a ways out from summons, but I'm pretty sure like all of the Final Fantasy summons are in this game. The Final Fantasy VII mm -hmm. summons. You get like... Anyway. I suppose it's worth touching on the job system in this game. Uh... Yeah, I tried to mention it earlier. It's a, It's a... It's like an extension, what sort of, an evolution of the Final Fantasy V job system. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where there's experience points and then there's job points. And any character can do any job, but they can only do one job at once. It's a lot like Final Fantasy X-2. Uh-huh. And you can combine, you can choose one set of skills from another job to also be able to use in battle. So you can have your you'll have your auto equipped job skills. So if you're a squire, it's for Ramza, it's metal m e t t l e, uh, and what is it for the other squires? Something. Uh, focus. Anyway, or something. No, I think that's just one of no, them. No, no, focus is the skill. Um, anyway, uh, but you can choose to keep using that. So like I have Ramza now as a knight. So his main skill is the knight skills, but I still have that metal skill from when he sk uh, skill set from when he was a squire mm -hmm. because it lets him heal and power up and do all sorts of amazing shit. FYI, if you guys don't know this, you should get as much of that squire shit as you can because all of it is super helpful. Yeah, f especially for Ramza because uh, mm -hmm. he gets some extra ones. Well, especially <laughs> he does, and especially because he gets like one of them, which is just like a strength up. That he does on himself. That's focus. Costs right? nothing. Yes, costs nothing and does like act as, uh, as a as an action that will award you XP and job points, mm -hmm. which some things won't. Like you can't just use potions on yourself, even if you're health is full, it won't count. Right. Uh, or if you cast a spell on somebody and miss, for example, like oh, I went to cure this person and missed them, it does not give you experience and job points, but. So having a skill that just lets you stand in a corner and continue to accumulate XP as if you were doing something is super handy. Mm -hmm. And one of my number one tips for these battles is don't move your characters right away. Let the other side come to you a little bit and use mm -hmm. that time when you're just standing there to cast buffs on yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's very much, and you said it earlier, it's very much like chess like you move your you move your, your it's a small squad five I think max that you control six maybe max uh, with yeah six max with AI characters maybe um, anyway uh, it's it's I find the strategy of these games very fun it is pretty it feels kind of simplistic to me now but back at the time I felt like it was incredible oh I can get behind them and hit them and that does extra damage or is less likely to you know miss or if you if your character has a shield or if the person you're hitting has a shield sometimes they'll just block your shit that that's one of the sometimes really good it's things not really true about all the time the <laughs> not all the time is that mm -hmm. they can use shields. Yeah, and it's interesting that you can get skills uh, as well from your jobs that will do things like allow you to, for example, one of the knight skills that you can equip is equip shields so that no matter what class you are, you can have a shield. I don't know why you would use that, but I guess, I guess, uh, you know, or like knight has equipped swords, so then you can go into other classes like black mage, but still walk around swinging your sword. Uh, if you want to, mm -hmm. I guess, you know. I did that with I've a monk a that. couple times. I had monks who had swords. Oh, wow, really? Was it, Did it make them, like, extra effective? Um, not really. <laughs> oh. Shields are super handy. They will often block attacks. Uh, and there's, I don't know what they're called in the game, but there's, like, your action skills, and then there's a reactive skill that you can choose which uh, you will get from different jobs like parry or counter, mm -hmm. or auto tackle, potion. I think. Or... Auto potion is the big one later in the game. Uh... 
<laughs> yeah, auto potion and only having X potions is or high potions or whatever mm. is the best thing in the world. And you can also get a um, movement uh, skill. So those could That's be right. like additional spaces you can move each time or the height that you can jump. We talked about how sometimes you have a staircase you have to get to to navigate. But if you can jump, then you can bypass that and just jump up on a wall or something. Uh, but other than the action skills, you can only choose to have one active of each kind at a time. So you can have high jump or you can have long move. You can't have both. Right. You can have parry, which will strike back with your weapon, or you can have, you know, counter, which will strike back with your fists. I don't know. There's a few of them for some reason. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I think, is there anything else you want to add to that? The job system, as you uh, uh, as you gain levels in jobs, that will unlock other jobs. So the game does uh, give you the reason to play through as many of the jobs as you can. Not all of them have skills worth getting, you know? Like, I've never really bothered getting much of many of the archer skills. But, you know, getting a couple of levels in Archer lets you move into other things. Mm-hmm. So you definitely... Yeah. Ninja, for and, instance. And it doesn't hurt. Oh, Ninja. Yeah. I had a character uh, at the last here, at the end of this chunker, that I had been running as a knight for a while. And just, she was slow, and she was never keeping up, and it was so frustrating. And finally I said, fuck it, and I switched her to an Archer. And suddenly she was like, she doesn't do as much damage, but boy, she hits him from across the stage. So it's... I was poking at enemies. Yeah. That's real handy. Uh, Much more handy than a knight that's always three steps behind everybody and cannot. Because then this is a, a, what I think of kind of a flaw of the game is that you only get experience and job points through the actions committed during combat. So if you have a turn where they're halfway across the map and you walk halfway across the map to meet them, you'll gain no experience. You'll gain no job points. It's it's actually really frustrating, and it makes leveling well, particularly difficult. I but think, anytime game. anyone uses a a skill, you get some experience. So, like, if you want people to get auto potion, all you have to do is have a chemist in your party doing their skills, and people get a residual XP boost to that class just for watching it, which is yeah. really cool. Because that way, like, if you just want one ability, you just have to have that one in the party. Like, so I recommend keeping a yeah. chemist basically for all of chapter one. Keep a chemist maybe in your party just so that. Uh, really? Yeah. I got rid of them immediately. I don't know. I, no, I think he, they're so good. Yeah. Th- they're I mean, really I good. got, I put Potion and Phoenix down on a bunch of people. And other than that, I didn't care. There's also a super sneaky way to get some job points. Uh, at a certain point in the game, you can go to taverns and they'll have errands that characters can run. This oh, takes oh, the yeah. character out of your party for a while. Um, so for a period of days and a day passes each time you move to a new dot on the map. Okay. Uh, yeah, but nodes. these characters go off and they have little adventures. And, uh, when they come back, they report about how they did and they gain job points and oftentimes money or rare artifacts or things like that. Could they die? I don't think so. Okay. I never had any of them die. No, no, it's, it's just, uh. They can't die. They don't, nothing happens. They can't they die, and they also and seem gold. to very rarely fail. You choose how many days they're gone as well, I think. And if you just choose the max, I think you generally will get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, um, but later on you'll have, early on here you don't have very many uh, party members, but later on you can have, what, 10, it's 12, 20, uh, it's, I think 15. it's 12 in original and 24. It's either, no, 16 in original and 24 in War of the Lions. Yeah, you can definitely later on. We can't do it now, but later on, I guess we'll have to talk about monster cap. cap. You can capture monster catching. Yeah. Monster catching. Yeah. You can catch them and and keep them in Gotta your party. Catch them all. Is that how it goes? Yeah, I'm not gonna. I won't be bothering with that shit at all. To be honest with you, I will try to get the additional characters because I love having them, and some of them are amazing. Mm-hmm. So that's big on my list, but. In fact, I think that Sid is a missable character. He's in the game, but I think that you can recru- you can choose to. There's a side mission to recruit him. I could. Yeah, I know. There's some, like side missions for Cloud, and Balthier. Well, no spoilers, John. Nobody knows that Cloud's in the oh, game. Sorry. <laughs> there's a ton of secret characters. Will we will I will I'll talk about them. There's none in this chapter. There's, I think. I hope. 
<laughs> I don't think so. But I didn't really I pursue so the secret characters. Because I wanted to use my neat. own ones that I developed myself. Yeah, a lot of them have unique abilities that you can't get other places in the game. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Like Mustafa. Uh, some of them are literally like the most overpowered characters in the game and... Like, you can spend hours grinding out your super ninja, or you can just recruit Sid. <laughs> and Argus, maybe, and maybe a couple other ones. You get some knights. Anyway, let's talk about There's this chunker. We are barely into it. Oh, and boy. we've been well, going for two hours. Not... All right, well, I'll tell you what. So we get sent to rescue the Marquis. Mm -hmm. uh, we head through... Uh, a place called the Mandalia Plains where we get into a fight, but it's just kind of a random battle. And these, uh, there's a few of these nodes on the map that are like random battle points where sometimes if you pass through them, a battle will spawn. And that's basically how you grind. It's, I don't know. It's, a, it's, it's now replaying it now, having to do this grinding. I'm very like, Ugh. <laughs> it's okay if you have I wish something that I else could, like, to do while you do it. Yeah, yeah. I wish that I had a. I wish that I had downloaded it on my phone, and if the, I wish there was like a new game plus. Like, is my save still there? Can I replay it from there with all my like top high, my high levels and stuff from the last time I played? If there is like, if you're in a podcast and one of the hosts is wanting to make you watch something like Wheel of Time, this is a perfect game for that. Where it's like <laughs> you can kind of pay attention to Wheel of Time, and you can also be yeah. leveling up. Your you know, characters. you know what? Instead of Wheel of Time, you should use the actual example. If you're in a podcast like this, and one of your co-hosts forces you to watch the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre <laughs> on Netflix. Straight to DVD requel. <laughs> we loved every minute of it. Subscribe to our Patreon to hear us rave about it now. Mm -hmm. I did play a lot of Final Fantasy while that was going on. Uh, yeah. um, so you, you find first you find like the outer base of the the Corpse Brigade guys, and uh, the, you get a little cutscene of, of Vigraf being like, "Don't hurt him. We don't kill people. Why'd you kidnap someone?" What's wrong with you? And Vygraf does, like, murder his, like, subordinate here. He does stab him real deep. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, yes, yeah, when we they... don't kill. Yoink. Kill. When there's, like, an, <laughs> when there's an in-game cutscene uh, kill, it's pretty great. Like, mm -hmm. you do see the sword go all the way through oh, their yeah. fucking bodies. It's pretty gross. Uh, so, Vi uh, uh, Marqui Marquis Elmdor is there. Vygraf's like, later I'm outies. Uh, he he lets them find this guy. Uh, and he does let he does run away, but he does let the hostage go because he doesn't believe in hostage taking. And you get back home and your brother Blarg Dog is like, what were you doing? You're supposed to be guarding the castle, not going out rescuing a Marquis. You big dumb jerk. I like how one of the things that is funny to me about like every like both sides have a lot of consternation around the idea of hostage taking, but most everybody is a okay with murder, especially if they're like peasant people. Uh, those people are like subhuman. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a big part of this. Uh, then the Prince Larg, is it Duke or Prince Larg? Larg. Yeah. His name's Larg. Larg. Yes, and his name Larg. Duke Larg. Yeah, Duke Larg. Duke Larg. He he's he walks in. And he's like, oh, so you're Dice Darg's younger brother. You're you're you look just like your dad, who was a big hero of the war. Great job rescuing the Marquis. And Dice Darg's like, hey, but like he did something he wasn't supposed to do, and he sucks. And Larg's like, yeah, but you know he did the right thing, and we, now we have the Marquis in our. Like he owes us favors, so that's real good for us. Uh, so he's happy that yeah. Ramza did do that. Mm -hmm. Things worked out after all. Mm -hmm. uh, so then we uh, we hear about uh, another group of Corpse Brigade causing trouble, and we go to fight them, and they are being led by the sister of the guy who. Uh, died in the last one it johnny doesn't why die did you say that he like ran away yeah no, he runs away he, he runs yeah, away he gets okay. the hell out of there yeah 
He teleports out. Are you talking about? Mil- oh no, no, no! After the uh, bat, that's at next, the, right? right. No, he doesn't teleport no, no, out. No. He just like We're, walks. It's a fun animation where he's like walking with his sword out around the room as they like circle around the room clockwise, and then he runs away. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you're right. They like negotiate. A... No, but that's that's. Well, that's anyway. the first time. Uh, we see so meet. Fire when we back. rescue the Marquis, that's in the siege of the Sand yeah. Mouse or yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. And they're like, that's, that's a great where they name. live. That's where Sand Rats live. Uh, Ramza heads out to uh, fight some more Corpse Brigade people. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, back at the castle, a brigade force led, of course, by Gagroth uh, <laughs> strikes the castle. Gustav. Yep. Isn't it Gustav? Gagroth. Gagroth, yeah, yeah. Gagroth. <laughs> um, Gustav. Comes to the castle. They injure Dystarg and uh, sort of try to take Alma hostage. Uh, but Zalbag comes out and rescues Alma. So Gagroth grabs a uh, deleted Titra. sister, Titra, instead, thinking that she is a noble. But mm-hmm. she's not. She's just a servant, I guess, of some sort. Wow. Well, she's Delita's sister. Mm. So, uh, Dice Darg does say at this point that, like, her safety is his top priority and she's like a sister to him. Mm. So, whatever. She's like. He does say that. He says that, um. To. Then, Ramza. uh. Yep. Uh, however, uh, as that's going on, um, and Dice Darg says, okay, I'm not going to attack the brigade. But Argath, the guy who loves to ask questions, uh, comes out and he's like, uh, I have a question. Uh, what if we don't care if this peasant is taken because screw her. She's just a peasant. Like, mm-hmm. we're going to cry over, like, every cow that we lose from the dairy farm? Come on. It's real rough. He is such a piece yeah. of garbage. <laughs> yeah. Like, he, he's not a bootstraps guy. He's, like, a eugenics guy, where he's like, you're poor yeah. because you're of bad stock. You're barely human. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's, like, the kind of, like, aristocrat that, like, the Corpse Brigade is trying to abolish. Yeah. Yes. Like, that that just doesn't have any respect for human life that isn't, uh, uh, like, a rich person. And yeah. uh, Delita, Delita doesn't like, like uh, all, this talk. All of those peasants are losers. They're losers, and I hate them. Mm-hmm. They got no class. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's my very good impression. That is guest. a wonderful impression, and I love it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so uh, he's sort of eggs Delita on and he's like yeah no one's gonna save her blah, 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 blah. and then uh Ramza hears that and comes rushing in and he's like get the heck out of here Argath and he's like but Ramza we're we're alike we should be the best friends and you should get rid of Delita uh, but Ramza does not he gets rid of Argath instead and they go to rescue Tietra and this is where they have their very special moment, uh, where they stand in the plains and talk about how Ramza's father taught them how to make a whistle out of grass. They're sitting in the sunset. It's a sunset. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the noise that the game makes that it thinks is a grass whistle, mm-hmm. I don't know how to describe it. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> sound looks so, that's not what it sounds sound like. effects are not this game's forte because <laughs> everyone <laughs> goes <"Wah!" laughs> i wish i could like find let me see whistle sound <laughs> vanessa <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't like I can't overemphasize this whistle sound. No, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. Um, not without playing through this whole stupid scene. But mm-hmm. it sounds bad. So after that moment of talking about things, uh, they move on all the way to 
Well, they first they come across uh, this woman, Meluda, and they're like, "Hey, Meluda, um, Meluda we're just looking Jamaica. Ooh, mm-hmm. I wanna take you to Bermuda with Ramza." Yeah, sorry, that was a beautiful song. And they're like, Meluda, uh, please tell us where Tietra is. Uh, and she's like, you nobles just live with your foot on the neck of everyone else. And we suffer so much and you suck and I hate you. And Ramza's like. Which is fair. Yeah. Ramza's like, that's pretty fair. I'm really sorry to hear that. <laughs> uh, we don't want to be your enemy. We're just looking for Tietra, who is not noble. So if you could please help us out with that. And she is like, F you, you're going to have to kill me. Mm -hmm. At this point in the game, I really thought maybe there was a way where if I just like stayed in the encounter long enough and didn't kill her, then I could like make the decision not to. And wouldn't that have been a fun, interesting game? Yeah. Yes, for sure. Something like that. Adding adding that type of choices to something like this would be super Mm -hmm. fun. Mm hmm. But, but this first fight, you don't you don't kill her. You just kind of. Oh, well, actually, that's a big point is you don't kill her. And she's like, what? You're showing pity on me. I'd rather you have killed me, you big jerk. Yeah, it right. Sucks. Yeah. She's injured. And she's like, if you don't kill me, I'm just going to find you later and totally kill the heck out of you. And Rob's like, of... I'm not your enemy. But I like how he's kind of doing the he just thinks. You know, there he sees everything in in black and white. This is the good thing to do, but he keeps being wrong over and over. Well, not wrong. Like his morals are correct, but the world isn't working like he wants it to work. I find that really yeah. well. Sure, I mean that's the the story here. This is chapter one. Yeah. The naive young man is having the naivete stripped from his eyes, as everybody is a huge dick. Basically, mm-hmm. hello and welcome to the real world. No one actually bothers living by that code that you were told to live by. And in fact, you probably won't be able to either. Yeah, I I really like that. Yes, it's excellent. It's, I think, uh, a lot deeper than your typical Final Fantasy game of, uh, you know, boy likes girl. God wants to destroy world. Why? I like all of this, like, family political intrigue. That's kind of my jam. And Matt, mm-hmm. in the past, this you've is... said that that wasn't your jam, but it's mine. I don't know. But I think Matt really that likes absolutely my the gameplay, too. You know that I love uh, Wheel of Time, right? And that we the love time. latter 12 of those bu- books were just all like politics and dances then and dresses. Then who said and... that this kind of thing wasn't their jam? It must have been Jim. Jim. It must have been Jim. Uh, well, okay. So here's an interesting thing. I believe that this game is based on the real life war of the two roses war of the roses that game of thrones is also kind of based oh, on i didn't know that i mean it, it makes sense i don't know that much yeah. about war of the roses that was that like 11th century or is that like 15th century i don't know let's not google it don't, don't ask i will questions. look at that next time and try to learn more about War of the Roses. Listeners, educate us on the War of the Roses. E L I. Danny DeVito five. stars in. <laughs> I would watch the shit out of that. He was in the War of the Roses, wasn't he? That that movie. It's not based on the War of the Roses, but it was called War of the Roses, and I believe that starred Danny DeVito. So we move on. Uh, we find Wygraf's group. They have Tietra in a windmill. And Wygraf mm-hmm. is like, I'd really like to free you, but I guess I have to, like, f- fight you with my chocobo so my friends can escape. This chocobo is named Boko. He has a uh, he has an argument with his men, uh, or one of his men, about what they're doing. The man, it's about having Tetra hostage uh, and about, like... Wygraf wants to die for the cause, you know, he, t- to make an impact, to change the, to try and change something. And, uh, his, but unfortunately his men, the Corpse Brigade are more interested in vanishing into the shadows or getting away somehow. So Wygraf stays behind and we murder him. Is that right? Uh, yeah, essentially. No. <laughs> He does not get murdered. He does teleport out. Pew. 
How does he teleport? Uh, teleporting son of a bee. I, well, there's there's a teleport. He uses the teleport spell. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. He definitely does. <laughs> yeah, I just like it. Yep. Arms in the air mm-hmm. and the laser beams coming down like it's Star Trek. Mm-hmm. That's the teleport. But uh, Gragoth, Gregoroth, I'm never going to be able to say this right. And as the night goes on longer, I'm definitely not. Greg, let's call him Greg. Uh, he is scared. Uh, so he takes Tietra and makes to this fortress with her. He's like, uh, oh, I'm out of here. Mm. And uh, yeah, and that's that's where that's where Weirgraf told him to go. He said, yeah. go beat it, get to the fort. Um, so they're all at the fort. Ramza's in pursuit, uh, and here comes Dice Darg, who promised not to attack the fort. Uh, mm-hmm. However, he shows up, and he's with Zalbag, and they yeah. have all these soldiers, and, and they're me. like, "Yep, yeah, and debate me." Dude, no, that's they're not all. Isn't it just Zalbag? Maybe? I thought it was just Dice Star. Oh, yeah, I think it is at least one of the brothers, and definitely it's, Zal- it's Zalbag. Okay, so it's Zalbag, it Zalbag. and debate me. Oh right, Dice okay. Dark is not here. They're there on Dice Dark's orders, though. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then it's sort of implied they have a whole army with them, and they're like, "Hey, uh, no, like you have this girl, but actually, like we don't give a fuck, and we're just gonna fight you all." Um, so then, uh, Gargoth is like standing on this bridge, holding Tietra at knife point, and he's like, "You won't do it. You're bluffing." And uh, then they they pull a speed, which is, of course, when you shoot the hostage. Whoa. Whoa. But Delita's there. Actually, this sucks. Yep, Delita's there. Um, Zalbag tells Argath, he's like, eh, shoot him. And Argath's like, okie dokie. And he just shoots right through Tietra. Mm-hmm. And she falls off the bridge. And Zalbag does not... No, she collapses on the bridge. Look, it would be better if she falls off the bridge. Let's just pretend she... If Michael Bay does the movie version of this, she will definitely... Well, first she'll be super hot, and then she'll fall off a bridge. Mm -hmm. Uh, Zalbag runs off, but just does not seem to even give a shit. And then you do spend most of this fight arguing with Delita and with Argarth, whatever his fucking name Mm -hmm. is. Mm Really was excited to kill that guy. I'll be honest with you. Like you really, this I I like this game. I think that it draw the story draws me in. Like uh, you, it doesn't you don't get a lot of time with him, but you have delete as your buddy for this whole chapter. He sucks. Like, but back when I was first playing this game, Delita was my buddy, and like I would go with Delita, and we would heal each other, and like you can play with Delita. Yeah. But... You, what you want to do is basically make him a chemist, or yeah, make him a chemist, make him heal people, because that he does do that. Oh, that would have been a great idea. Yeah. That would have been a great idea. I didn't bother upgrading his weapons or his uh, stuff once because I don't care. Because I and if you ca- thought if it you was let him die, the game automatically is like yeah, game over. Just... You won. <laughs> yeah, true. pretty much. Uh, you know, here's the thing: he'll sit there and do stuff. He's not very good, but like he takes up a turn, he eats up uh, health. Because when it comes right down to it, every bit of damage that you do is experience. Like I want it all for myself, not for Delita. So letting Delita die became the strategy for me, <laughs> particularly in this fight when Delita will run forward and die. And then you can just kind of hang back. So what it does here is it. This is I think the first time it first time it does it like this, where it splits your party. You pick two characters for the right side of the fort and two characters for the left side of the fort. And this is a real pain in the ass. Yeah. Finally, what I did was take my two left side of the fort characters, jam them as far to the right as they could go in that field, and then just move them over to the right and kind of back my team up and let Delita go get himself killed. And I made them come at me, and that uh, made this fight actually pretty easy because you can I ended up with Ramza killing uh, Argarth, and I was like, okay, this is kind of a poetic ending to this fight. You know, I liked... Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. I, I killed Argarth by... Uh, casting Fira on him, Fira on him, mm-hmm. uh, when he was surrounded by his guys. But then his turn was up next, and he moved directly into the middle of my guys. And then I hit him with Fira, and he killed himself, and it killed him, and a bunch of 
<laughs> well, it killed himself. It killed him and the black mage that cast the spell. And the other two survived. Yeah. <laughs> but still, mm-hmm. it was a real suicide move on his part. Uh, oh, story-wise, we and... should mention that you do fight Maluda again, and this time you do murder her. And when you talk to Vagraf, he's like, that was my sister. I want to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, we uh, we defeat Ar- Argarth and uh, the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, the place there's a cutscene. The uh, uh, earlier on they had mentioned that the place was full of gunpowder, packed with black powder with gunpowder, yeah. and it'll explode. And uh, we see a fire, and he yells at Delita, and everything explodes. Whatever, and that's the end of the chapter. Assuming that Delita is dead, except for we saw him in the prologue, so we know he's not dead. Yeah, but it is like, Ramsa thinks he's dead, and he's like, I'm gonna become a sellsword. I'm not going back to my dumb brothers. Well, his brother, and his brother did say to him, like, you're betraying the family here. You can't, you understand that you are, like, you can't, that you're an outcast if you attack your own men. Yeah. Because that's who you're fighting at the end there, is Argath and House Beluv <laughs> Knights. <laughs> so uh, so you have nowhere to go. So Ramza survives, but has nowhere to go, and apparently went and became a mercenary, uh, judging from the beginning of the game. Mm-hmm. The And that's end. it. Cool. Everybody's dead. What are we? Delita's dead. Tetra's dead. End of chapter one. Argath's dead. Where are we playing to for next next chunk? Ooh, yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, Vanessa. Yeah, Vanessa. Next yeah, Vanessa. chunk, we are going to play to the gold, gold gallows. Sorry, gold gallows. Ooh, the glow. Let me look at this word. I want to see this word. Gold giggle. Next. Oh, it's not even in this. It's not in the notes. <laughs> Vanessa. I put it in the chat, and I did not do the notes. Oh. I sent it to Matt to put into the notes. Oh, well, let me... I, I'm going to copy it in there because I use that when I make the thing later. Where is it? This is full of nonsense. Why is it... <laughs> Jim, you're, is that your Elden Ring guy? <laughs> no, that's one I saw on oh, Twitter. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you see my beautiful... Gold... Gogolada Gallows. I can't even find it in the chat. Gogolada Gallows. Vanessa. Did you put your guy in the Where chat? Is it's, it? Yeah, it's in there. It's in between the game FAQ I sent and the picture that Jim sent of this purple haired man. Right oh, above purple haired man. Gogolada. Gogolada. Gogolada oh. Gallows. In this old guide that I'm reading, it's called Golgorand, which is a. I do like name. that. Yeah. That's better. Also, we're going to pass through the magic, the Machine City slums, and you know who's there. Who? No, we haven't played that chunker yet. Mustadio? Uh, Yeah, Mustadio's there. Yay! And also, you get, I think you get Robo there. Robo, the secret character. He's great. He's Robo. All right, so that's it for this episode of Square Roots. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Wait, we still have like Bye. eight different things we need to do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do we have? Do we have? Oh, squarely yeah, against. Yeah, squarely against Jim. What are you roundly for or squarely against for this particular chunker? Uh, I'm squarely against all the stupid names. I they're so stupid that i have trouble remembering what character they're referring to when it's frustrating like, when i can't, you can't keep track like, of them pronounce it yeah. yourself right i can't like, when like, you look at a word and go what is that yeah because like because the names make no sense to me it's hard for me to internalize them and remember mm-hmm. who is who and mm-hmm. it's kind of frustrating Delete is easy because that name really stands out as being particularly stupid. Yeah, yeah so is Ram Ramses Ram's easy. Is, <laughs> Ramses is easy. Delete uh, is easy, but Delete everything is else is pretty but pretty bad. Yeah. Well, there's a, it's a mixture of like European names and like because like Wygraf, Vi, that's not right. There's some like real names in there. One of my my monk is named Thomas, I think. Yeah. <laughs> some of the random age. characters you have um, have yeah. like just. I have one named Serena, and it's like. Yeah. Uh, anyway, 
Jim. Wait, I might have named her myself because I thought she looked like Serena Joy. You know what? Never mind. Well, you know who she doesn't look like, and that's Serena Williams because there ain't no black people in this game. Oh, yeah. It's true. That's what I'm squarely against. That's a great one. <laughs> There's no people of color in this game. I guess, I mean, if you to give it the the standard... Jap, you know, it's a Japanese game. It is maybe they're all Japanese. So maybe, there are maybe, some uh, people of color later, um, but they are just Middle Eastern stereotypes, essentially. Ew. Uh, well, thank God they didn't try to use black people. Let's be honest. When they do, it's even worse. Y'all, y'all played Final Fantasy Thirteen? Whoo! <laughs> Problematic. Uh, you know what? I, I jumped into Jim squarely against with my squarely against. So I guess whoever's next. Janessa? Vaughn. I'm squarely against the uh, the sort of inconsistent difficulty of this game, uh, especially at the beginning. I think that it turns a lot of people off that the initial fight can be so confusing and hard. And uh, yeah. why not just ease people into it a little bit? Come on. Mm -hmm. What are you trying to do? I don't know. You're right for sure. But the thought of having to play like a tutorial level where it's like, move the square three faces. <laughs> I move. like that I voice. Would, I would do not That wanna... might be my favorite voice you've ever done there, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's my robot. That's my new, move that's my nerd square. robot. It's... Move the square three faces ahead. He's so friendly. Um... He's like an ASMR robot. <laughs> yeah, that. he's great. Bloop, bloop. Um, the name of the bar, Ropa. <laughs> Don't mind me. Most people are confused about what my function is. <laughs> what is ASMR? Vanessa, weren't you squarely against him? Uh, I already did it. It's Johnny's turn. I am roundly for the War of the Lions translation. It is nice to have this game. I wish that they did that with, when they re-released Final Fantasy VII. Like, just a little bit. Just brush it up so it makes it's more well-written. Like, yeah. Yeah, like it works better. It makes the game more interesting and adds texture. I think because this was so notoriously poorly translated the first time. Yeah. Like, it does, the story does not hang together in ways that make sense, I feel like. Whereas in this, it's very clear what's happening. It's really not that complicated. As much as it it drags along, this game it is a very slow game. Uh, you know, I mean, it's like you were a noble and then you turned on your family because they murdered your best friend's sister. But there's lots of stuff about like in the the original version, all the stuff about class doesn't really go through that well. And mm -hmm. yeah, you're right for sure. This is. Um, I mean, there's no denying that this is a much better translation. This is definitely there's a reason that we're all playing it, and not n nobody's fucking around with the PlayStation version because it's not good. Yeah. All right. Uh, do we have any emails? Like Jim's face today. Boom, Whoa. Vanessa. Oh, you're just sitting there thinking about Elden Ring, aren't you? Yeah, he is. Mm -hmm. I think he's actually playing it. <laughs> oh, I wish. I kind of, I kind of hit a point where I was like, I don't know where to go next, so. I went back and played Divinity. Then you can go <laughs> wherever you want. That's the Divinity thing. Until, not really, because there's a big storm gate in your way, and you can't really get past that. And I went south, and there's shit down there. I messed around down there a bit, and then I went east. There's not a lot. I got past the storm gate. Yeah, that's kind of, I you guess that's what I need it. to tackle next. <laughs> Can you? Yeah. Yeah, you're like, I, the game wants you to because there's no way you're going to defeat all those enemies. <laughs> like, just get on your horse and zoom past everybody. Yeah. Well, I did that. Like, I zoomed through the storm gate and then the big monster dropped and I turned around and zoomed my way back out. <laughs> <laughs> just if you run fast enough, you won't even see the monster drop. You'll just run past everybody. Yeah. Take your horse. Yeah. I, I am strong enough to straight up kill those trolls now, though, which is fun. Yeah, oh, Jim, those things are. I'm so good at video like games. Does leveling <laughs> really affect the the character in this game? I know that in other dark, and know that in the Dark Souls games, they've I've heard that leveling is really not that effective. What? That's not true. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Well, it's more about like getting stronger arms and stuff, and you need 
to uh, level I'd up say your that stats the weapons get... are pretty like you can stick with the same weapon the entire game if you want. Uh, and I probably chose a va- vagabond, so I'm still just sword and shield. Did you find the twin blade yet? Got to find that twin blade. I found the twin blade. No, I hate the map. You know what? If I compared <laughs> this game, if I compared Elden Ring to another game, it's it is very much like playing Breath of the Wild on master mode where anything that you run into kills you with one hit. So you just kind of have to slip by everything and collect gear and level up by killing dummies from the back, you know, to like get tough. I guess that's what I'm doing because I don't want to have to like fight hard against monsters. (laughs) I killed that stone doggo and boy. (laughs) Uh, So no emails, right? So what about Patreon? Uh, What's our Patreon, Jim? We have one of those. Uh, Our Patreon is a place where, uh, for a small fee, you can have access to a big backlog of content that we have, as well as fresh new episodes every month. Uh, For $3, you get access to all that sweet content. Uh, For $5, you get all that stuff, plus the ability to vote on games that uh, we're going to play for the show. And as we've said before, this is 2022. It's up to you. A year of all votes. So uh, subscribe to the Patreon. Get that sweet content. Cast your votes. Uh, we, we should probably put up the vote for the next one pretty soon. Within the next few weeks, we'll have another vote up. Yep. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can um, pick what we play on the show. It's going to be real fun. Um, another perk of having uh, a subscription to the Patreon is... Every week we like to read a few um, of our patrons' usernames on the show, and that's what we're going to do right now, starting with Matthew. I would like to thank Kita Renee Prince Sufuentes wants to make the world smooth, Nathan Poirot, Vanessa's Gold Taco Bell PS5, Aaron Zelda 2 is underrated little, OMG, what is this game? Lolly Luli Lo. <laughs> Lolly Luli Aiden Lolo. Marriott. Wash in the Wind. Amanda Douglas. Angel. Butts on Parade. Anthony Cruz. Vanessa, a pile of half eaten chicken parts is not a puzzle. <laughs> Likes big boats, they cannot lie. Warm daddy neck, it's warmer than warm. What? What? Andy Best, <laughs> Brie Girth, and Mary, Queen of Scoffs. And I would like to thank Grayson, Chris Ryan. Is a Diva Cup an ecological alternative no. to disposable sanitation projects? No. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Um, Cerebus Minotaur, Matt Rathbone, Cyril the Wolf, Sexy Grandma's Boy Toy is Christopher Thompson. Congratulations, Christopher. Zachary Train, Chris Peniak, Christian Go, Chad Wilson, DP2099. That's a long <laughs> time to wait for your DP, but it's going to be worth it. <laughs> Vanessa's Faustian Bargain, who told you? Eric Poirier. Oh, no. Do Good Recklessly. No pithy profile name this week. I'm on break. And Dylan Rowe. I would like to thank David Shook. Dustin, friend of DeSoto, Aaron O'Toole, Surrender or Die in Obscurity, Anaya Mazzini, Dovahkiin's Discount Dragon Barn, Eric Pidkameni, Eric Garb, Blame My Kids for the Booty Butt Cheeks name, Andy Smith, Ederol, Hexagon, Florian Jonas Kramer, George Brady, Gage La Charite, Eduardo Franco, Nofford, and Armin Hammer. I'd like to thank Hudson Roth. Ian Frederick, Isaac Wright, Tired of NFD's Nuts, Jack Nassell, Jake Dickerson, Metal Gear Solid 1 in 2021, It's Already Over, Jason, Tim's Tree, Diddy, Wawa Weewa, Huxley Iguana, DJ Ethro, Metal Gear Solid 2 in 2022, My Battery is Low, Chief Hazard is Mustadio Bonanza, Mm, are you? Well, I guess he's like an engineer, Justin Rash, John Scala, Magpie Juju, Joshua W. Broxon, and Jesse's Mom's Pizza has got it going on. All right, everyone. That's it for this episode of Square Roots. If you'd like to have an email read on the air, our email address is squareroutspodcast at gmail.com. 
We have a Facebook group. It's called the Square Roots Podcast Group for smart, cool, very attractive people. Or find us on Twitter at Square Roots Pod. Hey, if you're listening on Spotify, please tell them that we're still waiting on that sweet $30 million uh, podcast deal. They haven't contacted us yet. I don't know what the issue is. Like maybe they're just trying to put together an attractive package. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be $30 million. Uh, And (laughs) until that happens, if you want to listen to our back catalog, uh, check out our RSS feed or something else. Or something else. Did I miss my bit? Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, Ghana, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks to Stephen Morris for our Square Roots theme. You can find Stephen on Twitter as Beige on Beige and in YouTube. Links in the show notes. All right, everyone. For Square Roots, I'm Jim Banks. I'm Matthew Van Zant. I'm Johnny Brandon. And I'm Vanessa. Bye. 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 Which star sign is the worst one according to this game? Well, none. They all have the same. Like, each one has two good matches and one bad match. And they're all different. I see. Yeah. Let me look up Final Fantasy Tactics. Sorry. I know. we. I, I would cut this out. <laughs> compatibility chart. I just want to look at this compatibility chart again. Like, okay, Vanessa, you are uh, Aquarius, right? Is that okay to say on the show? That's correct, yes. Now, you have good compatibility with Geminis. Uh, Have you noticed that? Like Um, Jim? That's right, Jim's a Gemini, and also Mm -hmm. uh, one of my other very close friends is a Gemini, so I suppose it's true. Mm Mm-hmm. You have the best worst compatibility. So this means that uh, if it's a boy, you have very good compatibility. If it's a girl, you have very bad. Excuse the gender binary. We're just going with how this game works. Now, uh, that is Leo. So we have the best compatibility, Vanessa. Uh, how exciting. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, but Matt and I have the worst compatibility. <laughs> oh, that's, great. that's right. Yeah, oh, fascinating. Yeah. Now, now Jim is Gemini. So Jim mm-hmm. has bad. Oh, oh, let's talk about who you have bad compatibility with. That's the best worst. Sure. Uh, but, but Vanessa, your bad compatibility is with Taurus and Scorpio. Uh. Mm, yeah. Famously the most bullheaded and just straight up evil. I mean, sorry. Mm. Sorry to all you Scorpios out there again. A uh, very close friend of mine is a Scorpio. Uh, she delights in uh, all of the charts that Just say that try she is conniving. Her. Don't yeah, use buffs or healing magic on her. I won't use buffs uh, or healing magic on her. Now, Jim... It also means his... that like we can't hurt each other, which is nice for a friendship. Right. Jim it has best worst compatibility with Sagittarius. So if it's Sagittarius lady, then he's got good luck. How do you feel about that, Jim? Mm. Sounds okay. Okay. Uh, Matt, did you know that you and I are worst compatible? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> in the game, Matt. In the game, not in... But I feel like this star chart uh, is also outside of the game. I, I feel... I don't think that it... Uh, I don't think that it actually affects the game that much. Uh, it does, apparently. We'll find out. How? I mean, I've played the game multiple times, and I've never really had to think well, about it. Well, but you so never, I you didn't see how think... good it is if you actually paid attention to it. That's what I'm saying. Right. I've never paid attention to it, but I, I understand what you're saying. Sometimes, some, I usually, sorry, Vanessa. Sometimes some of my characters won't do, like, 
the right amount of buffs and things as I think they should. And it's probably a compatibility issue. Mm-hmm. And Jim has bad compatibility with, uh, where's Jim and I here? Don't hang out with Pisces or Virgos, Jim. Hmm. Yeah. They're bad news for you. Does that sound right? No, not not like IRL, but I'll accept it for this game. I I feel like someone with the first name beginning like first name with a D, a D name is a big like did you have a are you cold reading me? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there was there was something involving water and it was bad. <laughs> with you when you were younger water i mean fire fire oh yeah fire sorry opposite of water you know cold and hot there's something yeah. with fire with you i should be a bad cold reader uh like I, i'm seeing fire but it was really good like the fire was amazing and really helped you yeah ma- 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 well, oh, wait there's no fire maybe it's like it's metaphorical yeah pa- passion no 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 i i mean literal fire Oh yeah, no, that. <laughs> now, uh, according maybe you're, maybe you're maybe you're reading somebody else's energy. Yeah, that must be it. According to this random astrology site that I have Googled my way to, uh, my best uh, friendships and romantic relationships should be with uh, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, or Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries. That's Which like all of, exactly. so, all of them. Exactly. All of them? No. I'm incompatible with water signs and earth signs, like Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. But Aquarius is a water sign, isn't it? No, sir, it is not. It is a air sign. <laughs> no, it is the water bearers. I know, it's water. but it is an air sign, That It's yep. really stupid. Because they're bearing it. It's flo- the water's yeah, floating in the through the air. Yeah, in the air. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Nope. <laughs> now that I understand that I'm an air sign, everything makes so much more sense mm-hmm. to me. Yeah. It's H2O. There's oxygen in mm-hmm. there. Exactly. Uh Jim, I, I feel like I'm someone wants to talk to you, but and they're they're from like a they're from a like a city with buildings? Do you know someone <laughs> who came from well, I wouldn't put my kids to bed and came back and you guys are still not talking about this game. Uh, huh? <laughs> 